I hope you are having a great day, and I hope you're having a great year. Um, I've personally really been having a good year. Um, it's it's been a good time of um, just facing a lot of stuff. Um, you know, I went from I went from being confined to one room of my house to now. Um, just this morning, I, I biked 40 miles, um, and it's just it's good it's good to be able to conquer to to move forward. Um, I, I even had some some minor you know relapses with anxiety and panic, and I was able to push through them, and that's just been so great. Um, you know, just uh, every different season really gives you a new opportunity, and 2020 has been a great opportunity for just taking a break and kind of analyzing where I am and where I'm going, and uh, you know it. It's just a good thing to find good ways to, in, in every bad situation, good things in every bad situation. And so today we're going to look at how to reduce the risk of COVID-19. I'm not going to comment one way, another, one way or another about, um, you know, the virus itself. Some people think that it is, you know, the end of the world. Some people seem to think that it's non-existent. I'm not trying to persuade anybody's minds. Um, that's nothing that I even want to look at. All that I want to look at today is uh, reducing your risk of, co of, of COVID-19 and, and other infections, obviously. Um, and one of, the, one of the first ways that you can ever, you know, is, is your outlook. Uh, I know that that sounds, oh, what a hippie thing to say, but, but, but really, um, the body can really endure a lot of things. It's, it's the mind that oftentimes gives up. And obviously that's more for people who don't have corona than for people who do have corona. But anyways, um, obviously, um, I shouldn't have to say this, but I feel like they're, with how much people are arguing nowadays, I really should. Um, I'm not going to talk about treatment for COVID um, at all. Um, it's just going to be reducing your risk of catching COVID. Um, and obviously, you know... We're not also not going to look at things like um, uh, asymptomatic kind of things, and um, we're just looking at the just okay. We're staying on track. I know a lot of times people um, they they take a topic that they're really passionate about or worried about or whatever, and they kind of um, they kind of bring a certain level of criticism to it before we even start talking about it. So, the, you know, maybe you're waiting for me to say a certain thing, and that's <laughs> get out of the whole argumentative, I know all the answers mindset, and let's start looking at, at health-based um, and, and science-based um, ways of reducing your risk of COVID-19. Um, these are all things that are uh, backed up by science, uh, by research, all those things, okay? The first thing is one of the greatest ways that you can reduce, um, weaken your immune system is by living in a stressed environment. Um, when the body is overexerted for too long, um, and that, that that's physical exertion, that's mental exertion, whatever, when you're overtaxed for just too long, what happens is you know, your, your immune system starts starts weakening. Uh, people who have anxiety, for instance, uh, will have a weaker immune system typically, um, especially if they don't do anything to deal with it. Um, and right there, that's probably, you know, I'm, I'm imagining that there's people right now listening who have anxiety who are saying, well, great, now I'm anxious about being anxious. <laughs> and I, I hope that I'm not causing you to stress, but... Um, one of one of the one of the biggest things you, you can do to reduce reduce your risks of um, having very negative side effects is de-stressing, taking the time to just take a break from work. Um, I know we're working from home a lot. Some some people are um, kind of going overboard. Um, it's it's good and helpful if you really follow a set um, hours. You know, I, I do work from here to here, and don't work late and don't refuse to work. You know, I know a lot of times we can well. Who knows? What does it matter if I start work late? Well, 
that, that's not great. Um, really, obviously, you know, do, do things with excellence. And, okay, great. But remember to de-stress. You know, have days off. Uh, have Go for walks. Do things that uh, get rid of built-up energy. That You know, they have these kinds of things here where you can just have something to squeeze on. You know, just something that that releases some of that some of that built-up energy um, it shouldn't be overly surprising that staying inside of our house watching TV all day really isn't that great of um, of a health decision so uh, obviously um, I, I, I know that there's a lot of conflicting things really one of the greatest things you can do is de-stress so one one way I would suggest this is turn off the TV uh, turn off your Facebook just kind of step, take a step back from that stuff. Facebook isn't life. I know that right now winning the next Facebook argument is really on the top of people's charts. But really, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really amount to much of anything. And as far as the news, um, you know, more bad news. There, I just saved you an hour of, of watching the news. Well, actually, you know, it's on all the time. So I just saved you hours of, you know, stressing yourself out. Um so, okay, de-stress. And then another thing is detox. You can do this in a number of different ways. Um, the, the first is going on a short fast, um, maybe two to three days. Um, obviously, you should be consulting your doctor on different things to see what your body can handle. Um, another way you can detox uh, is by changing your diet, at least for a temporary time. Um, maybe switch to um, vegetable-based and cut out uh, dairy and meat and bread and that kind of stuff and just do that kind of thing. Sometimes people um, will just go water for, for so long. Um, and another option is, um, it's called uh, dandelion tea. Um, you can get it on Amazon, at Walmart, whatever. And uh, do that for two weeks. And, uh, you know, uh, these are just great ways to, great ways to detox. Um, another de-stressor that you could do is, is uh, take a bath. Um, you know, have have times that you can just unwind. You, you can't be constantly stressed all the time and have no bad side effects. Um, research shows again and again that one of the greatest ways that you can stay healthy are these two things right here. Um, just de-stressing. I know that sounds overly simple, but really it just does wonders for your body. Um, and then detoxing. You know, if you sit around eating McDonald's all day, it's, it's probably not the best of ideas, especially because of how much stuff is closed. Really, we're not burning very many calories, and so you've got all this excess of, you know, fat, and it's just, it's really, it's really going to mess up your system. The people who are most at risk with, for COVID are going to be the elderly, people with pre-existing heart, uh, pre-existing conditions. Um, the overweight, those are some of the biggest right there, and then people with a vitamin D deficiency. So um, if you're elderly, there's not much you can do. Um, obviously, you can try and manage any conditions that you have. Um, if you're overweight, you can try and start. This is a good uh, motivation for getting healthy. Um, and I'm not just talking about getting healthy by losing weight. There's lots of ways to get healthy, and I'll, we'll look at some of those in just a minute. Um, if you have a vitamin D deficiency, uh, one of the greatest ways that you can change that is going outside. Um, if you're living in an extremely hot place, um, like you know the Southwest, for instance, y you might want to be careful of when you go out. They they say typically you're not supposed to go out between 10 and like 3 or 4 um, because um, it's, it gives you a high risk of, of um, skin cancer. But you know just things like that to be aware of. Um, and if you have a pre-existing condition, obviously you should be working with your doctor to try and resolve that. You know, if you have diabetes, for instance, that's kind of a big, a big thing of what puts you at risk. Well, you can make lifestyle changes, and you can, um, you can, you can do stuff today to to help work on that. Um, obviously, you'll have it for life, but you can still manage it well. Remember your insulin. Remember to drink plenty of water. Remember to stay away from sugary foods. Just stuff like that. Um, uh, one thing that um, was there's a lot of research on it and then for some reason with COVID everybody just kind of forgot um, hand sanitizer is, is good in a pinch but when you're constantly using it it can actually make you more susceptible to illness so 
if you if it's not realistic for you to stop using hand sanitizer, limit it. They say doctors will tell people that um, don't use hand sanitizer more than three times before you wash your hands with actual water and actual soap. But see, that's one of the problem the problems is we actually have germs and bacteria in our guts, on our hands. And if you completely remove that from the situation, you're, you're kind of opening the door for a lot of health problems. Um, one of the things that we see with, um, with the Europeans coming to the Americas is that the Native Americans didn't have the, the immune um, the immunity to, to ward off these, these infections. And so one of the things that you really have to watch out for is in our zeal for not getting COVID, we're kind of opening the door for us to get lots of different illnesses. And what happens, you know, for instance, if COVID um, evolves again and, you know, becomes something way worse and we don't have a very strong immune system because we've been stuck inside of our houses doing nothing, that, that's not overly great for health. Um, so that's something you really need to think about. Um, so I, I would highly encourage you to either stop using hand sanitizer or limit it. Um, I, I know many people who just sit at home, keep squirting hand sanitizer on over and over again. It's like, guys, first off, it, it, it doesn't work like that. You can't just keep using it over and over again. It's, it's not going to work. Things do mutate. Um, illnesses, you know, obviously come back and just a lot of different things. And the goal is not to get rid of all bacteria. In fact, um, re recent research has shown that um, it, COVID does not spread very easily through, contact, through, through surf, uh, surface contact. So that's something to think about. Um, research also shows that um, asymptomatic people typically will not spread the virus. So, you know, if you're not showing signs and you're at your house with people that you're around all the time, chances are... Now, here, here's another problem that comes up. What happens when you work really close with, with a person or you're really close with the person that doesn't live with you? See, that, that that's a little bit of a problem. What I've seen a lot of people doing is they wear a mask all the time, they're paranoid, but then they get around a, a friend and they take off the mask. And it's like, well, the, the, the virus doesn't... The virus doesn't distinguish between, oh, this person's my friend. And so they can't give me the virus. Anybody can give you the virus. Um, so these are things to be careful about. Um, and maybe you think the virus isn't really that big of a threat. That's fine. I'm not trying to convince you one way or another. But um, you know, practicing practicing simple things like what I'm mentioning here is good for anybody, uh, regardless of whether coronavirus comes into play or not. So um, there's that. Next next thing here, get outside. Um, one of the, a lot of, um, out of all the people who died of coronavirus, a, su a surprising amount of them had a vitamin D deficiency. The, one of the greatest ways you can get more vitamin D in your diet is by going outside. Obviously, they sell vitamin D supplements and that kind of stuff, yeah. But, I mean, your body just naturally produces it when you're in the sun. So it makes more sense and it's cheaper if you just go outside. You know, maybe go for a walk. Um, just enjoy things. Uh, which goes back to de-stressing. When you when you find things to enjoy, it really does help. So uh, get outside. That's that's really a great thing that you can do. Um, sitting in front of your TV all day, it's that's that's really not healthy. And just eating potato chips and junk food all day, that that's really not healthy either. And when you have unhealthy practices like that, it makes your body weaker. Um, where you're you're actually opening the door to get more sick from a very minor illness. See, if you do if you don't do these things, what's going to happen is you're going to get a very simple illness like the common cold, and it's suddenly going to be a really big issue for your body to fight it off because your body's been weakened. We we've been weakening our systems for for the course of months here. People are gaining just astronomical amounts of weight. Uh, America as a nation is already a, a large percentage is obese. I'm not just trying to scare you or, or, or to you know point out all the faults here. I'm saying we need to start taking our health seriously. And unfortunately, we're not getting much sound um, advice and research um, you know, in, in the newspaper. And the news, people just keep saying the same thing over again. Stay inside. Use hand sanitizer all the time. You know, things that – it's like the, these things aren't really helpful. They, they aren't going to strengthen your body 
and they're not going to help you relieve your fear or anxiety or anger. So really, I, I hope that you that you consider these things. Another thing is eating healthy. I know we're trying to keep businesses open and that kind of stuff. I get that. Really, I do. But at the end of the day, you have to remember that your body can't take in junk and put out high performance. It's just not going to happen. What, what you see people doing is people living for 40 years on a terrible diet, and then they get older and they start having all kinds of health problems. Research shows, once again, that eating healthy is one, just a fa fantastic process of protecting yourself against corona and, and other illnesses and, and other you know, different things that can go wrong with your body. Eating healthy is really important. Um, maybe cut out, uh, cut out soda. Um, it would be very, very good if you um, tried to go sugar-free. That would really be good. Um, some people want to give up meat. Some people don't. I understand that. Um, if you don't want to give up meat, maybe consider fasting for meat just for a detox period of two weeks while you're drinking that dandelion tea that I was talking about. Different things like that. Um, I, I'm a big meat eater, so I'm not even going to try and convince you to not eat it. Um, obviously, there's a lot of health benefits to eating meat. Um, but anyways... I'm not trying to convince you whether to be a carnivore or a vegan. So anyways, uh, another th it's just a real simple thing you can do is exercise. Um, I, I like to bike. It um, really gets the heart going. Um, makes me feel great. Um, this morning, actually, well, last night I got a migraine. and I still had it this morning when I went up for my ride. and Man, it was hard to get going, but I still did 40 miles even with a migraine. And that, 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 that's good. That, that's really good. Um, exercise is, is something that, that really just does, has a lot of benefits for your, for your health. I mean, we, we could go on, you know, research after research about y your heart really isn't meant to be sedentary all the time. Now, obviously, don't go from 1 to 10. Maybe ease into it, especially if you're elderly. If you start exercising when you're elderly, check it out. Just don't, don't be like, I, I'm going to buy a bike. Hold on, hold on. Factor in where you live. If you live on a mountain, for instance, there's going to be a lot of really steep hills and a lot of really fast. So maybe ease into it. Maybe start going for walks. After you started going for walks, maybe start walking for a minute, running for five seconds. Something like that where it, where it doesn't overstrain your body because you don't want to make yourself have, you know, um, well, any number of health problems. Um, you know, and then obviously you need to consult with your doctor to see what kind of exercise is best for you. Remember, the goal of exercise is not necessarily to lose weight; it's to be healthier. The same as eating healthy. It's it's you're not trying. I'm not. I'm not trying to encourage you to get the body of a god. I'm I'm really not even hinting towards that. My goal is to help you to stay safe and to be well. Um, you know, I really like biking, but maybe you like something else. Um, so just find a way to exercise. Um, I really just can't can't say enough. This should be one of the. Uh, th there's some things that, that the news should be talking about with us getting healthier and preventing coronavirus. Uh, the biggest things: what you eat, your stress, and your exercise. Those are those are really just probably the three biggest things that you can do. And uh, so I, I want to encourage you to take these things seriously, you know. And, and even after this whole Corona thing is over, keep keep up with these with these just very basic um, health practices. And I think you'll find your, your life a lot better. Um, you'll find uh, you feel better. Um, if you have breathing problems, it can really help you breathe better. Um, but anyways, uh, there's just a lot of different health things here. Um, if you have an existing condition like diabetes, remember to take care of it. Don't just, I, I know actually a lot of people who, you know, don't take it seriously. You know, they, ah, it's fine. You know, I, I, check, check your hands and your feet. Make sure that you don't have any wounds. Uh, if you do have wounds, get them treated. Remember your insulin. Remember to eat healthy. Remember to, to watch what you're drinking and to, to stay away from sugar. Basic steps of just take care of, of your existing condition. We kind of have this idea of, ah, it's, it's not going to hurt me. Well, it will help you. It will hurt you if you, if you don't take care of it. Um, another thing is just practice basic hygiene. This is oftentimes just overlooked. Get up in the morning and take a shower. Don't stay in your bed all day. Um, that's just not very sanitary. And obviously, if you're living in an unsanitary environment, you're going to have a higher risk of 
getting sick. So remember to, to vacuum. Remember to, to clean. Remember to get rid of, rid of get rid of junk. Wash your hands. Wash your face. Take a shower. Just real basic stuff. Um, and then another thing is, you see, I see a lot of people who are wearing masks incorrectly. Make sure you're wearing the mask correctly. First off, the mask doesn't do much if it's not the right kind of mask. But even if you do have the right kind of mask, it's not going to protect you. It's going to limit uh, the spread of you giving it to others. Is that going to make sense? Now, obviously, it's not going to stop the spread. It's going to simply reduce it by a percentage. It has to be worn like so. It needs to be over the nose, below the chin. And the sides, make sure that the sides, because a lot of times the sides will be bunched up like this. That's just escaping air all, all over. It needs to be sealed correctly like this. And you need to make sure not to touch it. Now, obviously, this is going to cause a lot of breathing problems. It's going to be very uncomfortable, which is why it's important to remember to change out your masks. And do not wear a mask unless you're around other people. If you wear a mask when you're just in your house or in your car or exercising, it's really going to cause a lot of health problems, especially over time, especially if you're not used to exercising. So I, I hope that that really kind of helps clue you in. If you're still a little bit confused about you know, masks, maybe... Ask a, ask a health professional. Um, I'm sure that they can point you in the right direction. Um, but, I mean, obviously, maybe you're just wearing a mask because, you know, um, the store requires it or because your governor asked you to or whatever. I don't know, whatever. Um, and that's totally – that's that's your own thing. I'm not – I'm really not nagging people or, or, or making people feel stupid for either wearing or not wearing them. I, if you're going to wear gloves, uh, this is another thing, is you have to remember to change them out with every contact. Okay, so basically what that means is every surface or person that you touch, you have to take off the gloves and switch them out. If you're wearing gloves, it doesn't do much of anything if you're touching everything because the virus isn't spread through your fingers. So if you've got gloves on and you're touching something, then you touch your mask, it's not doing anything. Um, it's like those stupid little covers that they got for the credit card machine where they're not switching them out and they're not cleaning them off. And it's just all that you've done is you've made a surface that's plastic instead of a surface that's plastic. So it really didn't do anything. The viruses are the, – the germs are still being spread. Um, you know, a lot of times I feel like with – with this virus, people are just kind of clicking off their, their brain, and they're not really thinking about stuff. Um, if you're going to wear a mask, hey, do it right. You know, if you're going to if you're gonna wear gloves, hey, do it right. You know, just real basic, simple things. Um, the hand sanitizer that you um, – I, 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 I thought everybody knew not to use it all the time or, you know, if you have to use it, to remember to only use it three times and then wash your hands. But people, I guess, didn't know that, so I hope that that helps you there. When you're washing your hands, make sure to wet them, then count to at least 15. Obviously, don't go more than like 25 or 30, I mean, whatever. just depends on your soap, I guess. And remember that when you're washing them to go down, don't just stay here, because what happens is we wash the fingertips, and then right here, there's still a surface of germs, which obviously, as we touch stuff, spread stuff. Um, also, remember to only wash your hands when it's necessary, for instance, before eating, before coming in contact with someone else, that kind of stuff. Um, you shouldn't be washing your hands cons constantly because it's, it's going to cause, once again, more health problems. So I, I hope that these tips help you out. Um, please take them seriously, and this is something that, that doesn't just apply to uh, corona. This is something that applies to life. These are life lessons of being healthy, and I really hope that they help. Really, I do. Um, like I say, I'm not trying to argue one way or another. I'm just trying to help you guys uh, stay safe and stay well. So um, I want to go back to that exercise thing one more time. R remember, there's lots of different ways to exercise. And um, you can do it in or out of a gym. It really doesn't matter. Just make sure that you're doing it. Um, y your, your, your heart really needs about 30 minutes at least every day of, you know, exercise, something to get it going. You, you can't be sitting around all day. Um, you know, and really, I, I want you to stop, if you can, and just take a quick moment and say, what practices am I doing on my day-to-day?
basis is start paying attention to what you're doing. A lot of times we just go through the motions. Pay attention to what you're doing and then stop and say, is there something that I'm doing that maybe maybe that's not the healthiest decision I, I, I could make? And then obviously make the change. So have a great uh, great rest of the day and uh, stay safe.